Welcome back guys. This is part two of making the needle book felt insert. I had to chop this into two videos because they were both too, way too long to make into one video. So we're going to jump right in. There was kind of an abrupt ending to the last video. So we're just going to jump right back in after having made the big flip pocket and we will finish this thing up today. Thanks for joining me and I will see you at my desk. So that is the first pocket that we're going to make. Now the rest of this is really up to you where you want to put the pockets. When you open it up, oops, when you open it up, you can put various pockets. Let's make um, a needle keeper first because you can put pockets wherever you want to. On this one, since I put my big scissor pocket in the front, and then when you open it, you know, you can stick needles through here like this. Right, you could put some sewing needles in there. You could put safety pins and attach them in here. It's just a kind of a substrate for putting needles and stuff into. When we open it up, we're going to, you know, these big pockets here will be able to hold some ephemera and stuff, larger stuff. But here we've got pockets. And in my kit, let me show you if I can put my hands on it quickly. Oh, come on now. <clears throat> this is the needle book kit that I've got cut out here. So I'm trying to get to these pieces here. This one and this one and this one. Okay. The rest of this is just little decorative stuff that we'll use in our journal. But these pieces, which I am going to um, back these ones with some cardstock to give them some heft. This one is um, a needle keeper. So we're going to fold this together and it's going to be a little needle keeper. So this can go in one of the pockets and it can actually be functional as well. Then I've got a couple of button cards and so we can stick those. We're going to put some actual buttons on them once I back these. And those can go in pockets, right? And then these, I'm going to wrap some um, thread around or some of my embroidery floss kind of decoratively, and those can go in pockets as well. And then this can go around some embroidery floss or some um, seam binding or something, and that can get pinned on too. But you just want to kind of keep these pieces in mind because if we make little novelty bits out of these, you want them to be able to stick into pockets. And these are a little wider and this one's pretty tall. So if you make a double layered pocket and those can fit into those. Does this make sense? So kind of at this point, keep in mind the size of pockets that you want based on what you're thinking you're gonna put in there. <coughs> All right, I'm gonna get rid of my embroidery floss here for a second. And now I'm gonna pull over my scrappy fabric. And this is where you could use um, pieces of, so like this is a piece of a cover that I cut off. It's got um, a couple layers of stuff going on here, right? It's got some of the, the felt in between it too. But if you trimmed, you could make a pocket out of that on here. Or here is my, um, some cutoffs of one of the other covers that I made. So you could sew along the edges of this, right? Trim it up and make a little pocket out of that. However, keep in mind, you know, like here I've got several, hold on, let me get rid of this. Let me get myself organized a little. I've got several covers going on, but this one's kind of yellows, greens, and blues. So I'm going to try and match the inside to that a little bit, but I do want to kind of pull some pink in as well. So I've got some leftover pink fabrics as well, but I definitely love this fabric here. So we can make a pocket out of that for sure. Oh, but I was going to make the needle keeper first. So, okay. Let me grab my example again. 
so this right here is my needle keeper and I will show you what I mean by it. So it's a piece of felt sewn onto the base, right? And then there is a second piece of felt here and some fabric and rickrack for decoration. But what this does is it gives you the, the blue on the back gives you a double layer with this background felt. And then this top piece kind of prevents you from poking yourself, right, as you're putting these through. So when I poke my needle through, I can go through this blue layer and then I go behind here and you can kind of see where it pokes out at the bottom, but then I can push that bottom piece right back into this blue felt and that way I don't have a bunch of real pokey edges sticking out. So again, just take another one of my sewing pins through the blue behind these layers here and then down into the blue again at the bottom. Okay? And you can layer this felt up. So let me see if I did this in my other one. I feel like I did it in one of these maybe. Yeah. Here I have my blue base felt layer. And then I have two layers of felt here. And you can do that if you've got like real small pins. You can put those in between these top layers of felt. So you can put them in between the green and white layers and then you can have other bigger pins back behind, right? It's just some layered up felt because pins go through the felt really easily. And so it's some layered up chunkiness of felt that you can stick pins through very easily. And there's something along the bottom to catch the tips if you don't want to end up with those in your finger. So we are going to, oh, that's the, we're going to make some. So that's why I said keep all your scraps of felt. And I'm going to, because this is, you know, white, I don't want to use white scraps, but I have been using some blue to make my pocket there. So I will probably stay with some blue. And then I'm going to just look for some thinner layers. And maybe on this one, let's see if I've got a wider. Yeah, that's kind of fun. I've got kind of a sagey green and a, that oatmeal color and then the blue on the back. Although that blue isn't quite wide enough. I'm going to want a little wider because I have to be able to go around the outside edge with my sewing machine. I like that. And you can put this, you know, where again, wherever you want to on your little insert. And in order to know, so I line up all my raw edges here. And then in order to know how wide to make it, I'm going to take this edge and this edge. And I'm going to move this up here for a second. Whoops. Catches on my dry hands too. Okay, I'm going to fold these two edges over. And I'm going to get rid of this front page because I don't need this in this moment. This is all going to be worked on the inside. Okay, so now I know how wide, right? And I want my, I want to again, allow for the blanket stitching here. This center will be sewn in. There won't be blanket stitching here. So I'm gonna make sure these are all lined up there. And then I'm gonna go, okay, I wanna go about this long and save my pieces. So there we go, I've got my, piece there. Then <clears throat> I have got somewhere up here. Oh, I've got this fun stuff too. I've got this fun trim. Maybe we'll put a piece of that down the middle of this. Isn't that kind of cute? I just like to add some rickrack or some ribbon or something. It's totally not functional. It's more just decorative. Um, but it's also the part where I will sew over the top of that because the only other place that this will be sewn is around the edges of this blue. These edges here will stay free. So what I'm going to do is take this entire piece and again, this stuff is so now we've got layers of felt on top of felt. So be careful because it wants to move around so much. 
So I'm going to line up my edges and line it up just how I want it. And then I am going to go zigzag right down the middle of that. And I'm going to do it on my widest zigzag setting just to give me a nice big base because that's the only thing that's going to hold this together except we're going to sew around the edges. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, guys, so look at what I was saying, how they all want to like slide on each other. I ended up where I started sewing with a little bit of an offness and then it all ended up over here. But here's the quick and easy fix to that. I am going to trim it up. So I just cut this little weird edge off and I'm just going to cut the weird edge off over here. And it doesn't matter about my back stitching on this piece because we're going to sew around this and we'll catch that. We'll finish it. Okay. So there is my happy little pin piece. Now the next thing we want to do is figure out where you want it accounting for blanket stitching on your open edges right and I've just got my one thickness this is my inside page and I am going to go so zigzag catching over the edge of this along here all these layers here it's gonna get real chunky when you get over to the edge here but just do your best to guide it through your machine along the bottom and then back along the top I'll go do that and I'll be right back okay now I've got it stitched on Right, so I went all the way around my edges and they are nice and finished. And now we've created our little needle keeper. You could put a second one of those down here. You could put one over here because remember this is our inside page. So um, I'm gonna put some sort of pocket here. I'm gonna layer my felt scraps back up. You could make a pocket out of felt or put a little felt piece on top of your pocket to be a needle keeper as well, right? So you could do this and put a little needle keeper on the front of your pocket. I mean, really dream away, be creative, do fun stuff. I'm going to go like this. So this will be my pocket here, but that's fun, but it would be way funnerer if there was a little piece of lace or something across the top. So I will go to my, whoa, this is all tangled. There we go. So in keeping with matching with, you know, what's on the outside, I think I will put another bit of this ruffly lace here. Since that kind of matches my pocket, my scissor pocket on the front. This is some old vintage stuff. I just got a huge bunch of vintage lace from a friend. That was awesome. So I will sew that onto the pocket and then I will sew the pocket just around the edges onto here. I'm leaving raw edges because this is kind of a raw edgy type of thing. If you want to fold over and finish edges, by all means, go for it. Uh, if you were going to finish the edge of this, you would want to... Um, First of all, you'd want to fold this over at least once, or you could do it twice. You'd need to cut a much bigger piece for this. You could fold it over once and twice, stitch along that edge to have a finished top edge, and then you'd need to fold under a quarter inch seam allowance around the edges and stitch directly over that. Um, there are many lovely videos on putting on patch pockets and appliques and stuff. Again, I know how to do it, but I kind of prefer this raw edge look. And so I have a raw ripped edge and I'm going to sew this on um, right below the top of my raw ripped edge. And then I'm going to sew right along the edges here with a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch. And I like that patchy look. So I'm going to go make this pocket and I'll be right back. Okay, guys. There's my cute little pocket sewn on. And now I've got to decide what I want to do over here. In some of my other ones, I've made like crisscross pockets. You can certainly do that. I mean, it's super, super up to you. Um, here, I think that is a weird piece that's not going to work for my what I'm trying to do here. But I have another big piece of that. Oh, maybe I don't. 
have a smaller piece. That could be an accent because I kind of want to put that green on here. Oh, stringiness. All right, let me look at the cover again and just kind of see my color scheme. Right, so far we're doing good. We've got some of that on the cover. Let's see, I wonder if I have any of this. Oh, um, a little tiny piece. I've got some of this. That's big enough for a bigger pocket. I've got some of this big enough to be a layered up pocket. These are smaller strips left over from this. And then maybe I'll incorporate a little bit of pink or something. I don't know. Maybe not. We'll see what I'm thinking. Okay, so maybe I think what I'm going to do is for those button cards, how I've got the one bigger one and the one smaller one, I think I'm going to make a double pocket here. So I will, and this is how you can kind of eyeball this. Let me grab them back out a second. So I imagine, again, I'm leaving myself lots of room for the blanket stitching, right? So if this were to go in the top pocket, I wouldn't want it to stick out too far. So this is actually decent placement there. And then if I put a second pocket, if I sew these two pieces together, so I have kind of a pocket here, and then I'll put a piece of lace there. But then if I come down and leave myself room for blanket stitching, and that goes in, right? So this one goes in here. So those look good. That looks good, and those will fit into these pockets well. I'm going to create a little slightly bigger piece by taking these two um, together and opening them up like this. But first I'm going to trim all these down to the same length. And again, I'm going to fold this closed and I'm just going to pinch it here so I can see. There's my top and bottom. and. I want to go about here. Since I want these all the same length, I'm trimming like this, but what I'm gonna do is take my thing and open this up. There we go. I'm just scrapping up my edges here. Oh. Hold on, I've got someone at the door. All right guys, that was my sister. She was dropping off some paper that I need to cut out on my, um, She's she works at the school and she's making a display. I need to cut this many pages of puzzle pieces, 105 sheets. That's gonna take some time, but <laughs> I'm glad to do it. She makes cute displays for the students and stuff. Okay, so like I said, I was roughing up the edges, I think, which is what I was doing. This edge is a little wonky, so I'm going to trim that straight. All right, and I'm just trying to loosen up my edges because I like that look because I'm doing raw edges. Again, you don't have to. Like Nick the Booksmith says, I'm not your mom. So you do, oh, I don't have to do that one because I'm going to do it over, right? So I'm going to go make a patchwork pocket out of this. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I made a little patchwork pocket here so it could be deeper is what I was going for. And I think to carry this over here, I'm going to, I've got more of it. So I think I'll sew a little bit on the top there maybe. Or do I want to go along the... I think I'm going to go along the where it goes, where I worked the two pieces together. So I'm going to put some there, and then I'm going to get some lace. I've got a big card of lace here. And I'll put some lace along the top of that pocket. I'm cutting them just a little bit long, which is fine. And I'm going to put a piece along the top of this pocket. 
So I'm going to sew this on and then I'm going to sew lace onto the top of both of these pockets. Then I'm going to get them all trimmed up and lined up. And then I'm going to, um, first I'm going to sew the bottom of this one on. And then I will line them both up and go along the edges. So I'll show you that in a second. Okay, guys. So I am leaving room for my blanket stitching and I'm going to pop this on here one more time. That's too tall. So I'm going to go with about there. And the first thing I'm going to do, even though I'm going to layer these pockets up like this, the first thing I'm going to do is go across the bottom of this because I want it to stop. If I went like this, and just sewed around the edges, this pocket would go all the way through to the bottom of this. So first I'm going to zip across there, and I'll be right back. All right, so now I've just got that bottom of that pocket edge solidified. And then I'm going to leave room for blanket stitching along the bottom and line my edges up. Give that a little of a stretch there. So it lays down nice. And I'm going to go zigzag around the edges of this whole thing. And I'll be right back. Alrighty. Let me catch this little string and get rid of some of this. Now I've got my double pocket. So I've got a big pocket here. And then I've got a shorter, smaller pocket there that my needle pieces can fit inside of. So, so far on our insert, right? We've got our front pocket here for our scissors and our flap open for needles and pins and what have you. Then we open it up and we've got a needle keeper, a smaller pocket here and a big double pocket there. This will be stitched down into our signature. And then on the back side, you can decide what you want to do back here. Again, you could put some a big crisscross pocket like this, you know. You could put another double pocket. You could put a pocket here and a pocket here or a needle keeper. Um, it's really up to you. <laughs> so you decide what you want to do. I think on this one, I'm going to get rid of this. Since I have a couple big pockets here, I can fit my buttons cards in there and I think since this you know what I think what I'm going to do is I'll put this uh, needle in here since we've got needles here so I need somewhere for my um, two little bits actually this is the wrong kit for this but anyway it gives you the idea it doesn't matter you can use this these notions even with the bigger other kits it's up to you but I want a pocket to put some of these in. So I'm probably going to make two pockets on the back here. And I'm going to keep this one up there just so I can kind of look at what fabrics I've used for that and not use the same exact ones. And I do have this little tiny piece. I could make a little pocket or... pocket here and then a big corner pocket maybe we'll do that since I've got it so in order to know where I want that edge to line up though I'm going to fold this back in half and line up my edges and I want this to come so this is going to be on the folded side so I'm going to need to leave some room there because that's going to be machine stitched down and I don't want it being totally you know, rolled over. So I'll leave some space there and kind of lay it down there. The nice thing about working like this is that the flannel, it's like a flannel graph. Do you guys remember those? We had them in Sunday school where the little teacher would have like a board with flannel on it and then all the little pieces like there's the disciples and Jesus and they would just stick right to it because felt sticks to felt, you know, there's the Jesus and it would just stick on there. Flannel graph. So when you're doing this, it kind of lays, except for that chambray, because that's wonky. Um, I do have, 
Where is it? This fun, uh, like measuring, faux measuring tape looking ribbon. And it looks really cute along the edge of this pocket. Plus it stabilizes it because it's really only one piece thick. So I'm going to sew some of that on it and I'll trim it. And then I got to decide what do I want to do down here on the bottom. I think that yellow was too thin to be a bottom pocket, although I like the color of the yellow. I think it's just too thin. On the top. So first I'm going to sew the lace and the measuring tape ribbon stuff on. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to sew those on. I'll sew it to this piece and I'll sew this to this piece, right? And then I will come back and I'll show you how I'm going to lay them out and get them on. Okay. So now I am going to line them up. So I'm going to line up my edge over here and make sure I've got my straight middle edge going. And then I'm going to use this one and again I'm leaving room for blanket stitching I know I've said that a thousand times but I have to say it to myself to remind myself and then I'm going to just line these pockets up all right and I don't have to stitch this one on first because as I come down this edge since I've lined them up I will catch the edge of the this pocket underneath it and as I go across the bottom it will seal this and this and then I'll just come back up the side here and it will seal both of them in as pockets so I am going to go sew down this edge across the bottom and up this side and not through both layers just through one like this I'm gonna keep them all nice and pressed on there so I know exactly what I'm doing all right, those are finished and stitched on there. Let's trim up the threads. So now I've got uh, two pockets. So you guys, we have finished making all of our little pockets and stuff on our, let's go, lining it up leaving the overlap on the inside and trying to make sure that's about the same. Oh, there we go. So we've got our front pocket is our flip up and our scissor pocket behind. And then when we blanket stitch, that'll become a pocket there. And on the inside, we've got our pockets and needle keeper. And then on the back, we've got our double stitched pocket there as well. This whole thing now is ready to be blanket stitched around the edge. I have no idea how much time <laughs> I have invested up till now because I fast forward and take breaks out of my thing. So my recording time is never the same. But what I'm going to do... I'm going to have a bit of a straighten. I'm going to pause it for a second. Have a bit of a straighten of some of my mess, and I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. I've straightened up my workspace a little here. I've got my cover. I've got my pockets here. And that's just to show you I've chosen to go with this blue embroidery floss as kind of a nice contrast. It, it's almost the same. It's a little darker than my binding that I used on here. So that's the color I'm going to choose to go with. Um, for around my edge for blanket stitching. If you know how to blanket stitch, then you are ahead of the game at this point. Go ahead and stitch around. I'm, I will show you how I do this. You could do any sort of edge stitching that you want. Um, again, my hands are not the greatest right now. We are just recovered from some massive inflammation issues in them. So, uh, I will do my best. I'm going to cut a piece big enough that I, because I want to be able to get all the way along the edge and up one side um, before I have to switch out thread because it's hard to switch in the middle of it. So I'm going to cut, cut a big enough piece that I think I can accomplish that. And I'm going to thread my needle, of course, off camera. All right. And since I'm working with such a long piece, I'm going to pull my tail almost even. I'm going to put a knot in the bottom. And I am working with like, okay, I've got a really big long piece here, but that's okay. That's what we want. Now you want to make sure that you have lined up 
and this again it's going to move a little bit it's going to migrate but you want to make sure that you've got basically the same the biggest thing is that you've got the same amount of overhang here as you do on this side and i'm good and i'm going to start up in this corner because i work my stitch that way and so i'm going to pinch these two together you can, if you want to, you can put some pins in. Um, I, you know, to keep your stuff where you, your work where you want it. I don't because I end up poking myself with them. So the the felt just kind of holds to itself, and you just make sure you keep the top aligned as you go, and it should be fine. To hide our knot at the end, I'm gonna come up here, right? This is where I'm gonna be sewing, starting my sew. I'm gonna go across the top edge first. I'm going to pull just the front edge down and right there I'm going to pull through just the front edge and that hides my knot behind. Now I'm going to sandwich it back together and I'm going to bring my thread up over the top and I'm going to try and I'm going to go through the back side and I'm going to try and come out right about in the same spot that I just did. Okay? And then before I pull this, so you should have a loop like this, right? It should be coming through the back side and through the front side about right where you sewed through the first time, right there. Now before I pull this loop all the way tight, I'm gonna put my needle through it, through the loop, right? And at first, you're going to have a lot of thread to deal with. You don't have to cut it this tight if you don't want to. And pull, then you're going to pull it not super tight, but taut. Okay. Then I like to take my running thread or my, I call it my running thread. Again, these are made up Nikki titles for things. <laughs> anyway, this could, I consider this my running thread. And I pull it right along the top because what the blanket stitch is going to do is create this nice kind of layer along the top that finishes it well. Okay. So I'm going to go leave this along the top and then I'm going to go, you have to make sure that you're, what you want to do, the, the goal is to make sure that your stitch this way is about the same distance this way. So if you know, this is a quarter inch, then you want to go the quarter inch over to your next one. I'm going to come up from behind and try to go about the same height there and pull it through. And then this is where I'm keeping this one laying over and I'm going to go up through that loop and that just got all messed up. It's hard to do this. And when I've got my long piece of thread, sorry guys, but I really want my long piece of thread and I just made that all wonky. Oh my gosh. Do as I say, not as I do, guys. I just totally tied a knot in my thread. Please hold. There we go. Oh my gosh. Okay. Then I'm going to bring it back across the top. Let's try that again. I'm going to come from the back to the front. Okay, now I've got my loop there and before I tie my loop, tighten it, I want to go through it and hopefully not tie a giant knot. And then as I tighten it, it should form a stitch like that. So it'll look the same and should look the same on the back and the front. Okay, let's do it again. I'm going to keep this piece running over the top. I'm going to come from the back to the front. Pull my giant knotty piece through. Then right as I get to where I've got the little loop, oops, I'm going to put my needle through it. And tighten it down. So this should be the look you're getting. Okay. If I am not describing this in a way that makes any sense to you, please go visit um, another YouTube 
you know, channel, there are brilliant tutorials by people that are actually like embroiderers that can show you, I'm sure, how to do this way better than I am explaining it to you right now. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go all the way along this top edge, right? So we want to go all the way along the top edge, and when I get over to this corner, I will come back. And now I'm to the corner and now instead of stitching these two together like we did here we're gonna go along the front edge and then stop then we'll go along the back edge here and then go down here and when we'll go along the edges of these two okay so to turn my corner right I've got I'm gonna come one time let me see if I can get close enough here holding this all awkwardly, right? I'm gonna go one more time through here. All right, then I'm gonna just take this around to this side, my running one, and I'm gonna kind of pull this back and I'm gonna come up and I'm just literally gonna do the same thing. Um, but I'm doing it a little bit closer than I normally would. And it just turns the corner, whoops. It just turns the corner and now I'm gonna keep my blanket stitch going down this side. So, making sure you're only going through one layer at this point, right? I'm gonna put a pin in this just to hold this flap down because it wants to go everywhere right now. There we go. Okay, where was I? I'm trying to keep my thread straight. All right, so I'm going to continue on. I've made my corner and I'm going to continue on just coming down only the one side, not doing two sides together now. Only the one side to put a finished edge along, you know, both the front and back side of this. So I'm going to do that and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, guys, so I've gone along the top edge and along just the front page, right, of this. And I've come down to finish it at the end here. And what I'm going to do is go through, oops, sorry, <laughs> go through where my stitch was through both of them. And then because I've got my little bit of an edge overhang here, I'm going to go through on the side here. And then I'm going to kind of open it up, go back through to the middle part here and pull that tight. And then I'm gonna hide my knot down inside here. Okay, so I'm gonna just do the thing where I catch only the front side of the felt and put a knot down in there. So that it hides it from, you know, the outside finished product.
There we go. And there we are. So there is the front and side done. Now, obviously, we need to go along the back side of this, then all the way down the bottom together, both pieces together. And then that will probably be one piece of thread for me that I'm going to load up one more time and I'm going to go across the front part and across the back part of this one. So I'm going to do all that stitching off camera because my hand is starting to hurt, which means I need to take breaks my um, and shake them out. So, okay guys, I've got mine all sewn all the way around. I've done both sides here and both sides here and I have brought my cover back in and now we are going to do the final step which is sewing this to the cover so um the first thing we want to do is find out where our exact center is on the top and the bottom so i'm just going to use the measuring right on my board here and i'm going to look at this and i see that my insert is exactly 11 inches so I'm going to make a tiny little pen mark at five and a half, which is going to be center. Um, maybe I'm not. Let me get my... I just want a teeny weeny little mark. So I've got a little black mark there. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the same on the top side. Okay. So now I know where my top, where my center is right then like I said in my I'm going to lay my insert on top of my um, cover and I want it to be just slightly skewed to the front side it'll give us just a little extra room to insert our journal in back here so I'm going to make sure that I'm lined up along the bottom make sure I'm lined up along the top make sure that I am straight here and then I'm going to take a pin and put it in through all the layers there and there because I really don't want to lose my center here and then what I'm going to do is take it to the machine and I'm going to go from the very top edge of my insert here and I'm going to do a real tight zigzag stitch all the way down to this spot here. So I'm going to just go end to end. And that will go through my cover as well. And that will essentially attach this, make these into pockets and everything. So again, I'm going from my edge to my edge with a nice strong stitch. I'm going to back stitch here and here and make sure that I've got a nice strong stitch holding everything together. I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. All right, guys, there we go. I have a nice strong stitch. You can't tell it's a little tight little zigzag that runs all the way through both layers of my insert and my cover. So I have now essentially created, like bound, <laughs> my needle book. You can see where the stitch, you know, where the spine is here along my edge. And when I close it, I've got a little extra room on the edge here so that any sort of extra stuff that's in these pockets will not fall out because when it's closed, that will kind of create the... The edge there to keep that stuff in so we have got oh I can take that little pin out now and I can put my I can take my thread out from the inside and install my scissor I still need to put some sort of little charm on the bottom here but So we've got our flip up and that'll hold the little flip shut as well. So we've got that and then we've got a big pocket here. We can put all kinds of ephemera and stuff in. Then we've got our needle keeper and we've got our double pockets, pockets here. Then we've got another big pocket here. And then we've got our corner pocket and our front pocket there. And then we've got this felt space here 
where we're going to eventually, um, in the next video, we're going to create our journal. Whoops, wrong one. <laughs> we're going to take uh, our signature and we're going to make a cover for it. And then we're going to find a way to attach it into the back here and we'll decorate that. So then eventually we will have this chunky needle book journal slash needle book thing going on, right? Um, also, something that I was going to mention in my cover video is if you want to put something on here, you know, before you attach the backing, you could do some embroidery. Like if you, if, if I didn't have problems with my hands seizing up on me, I would have probably done some pretty leaf stitch or flower stitches along the edges of these. And I think that would have looked really creative. Or you could take a piece of fabric if you, you know, want to and embroider a little flower or something on there and then just stitch around that and stitch it on and that can be a nice decoration. And lastly, I do have somewhere here, oh yeah, some um, from my last needle books and I just, I found these as I was going through my stuff. These are some sewing ephemera that I printed onto uh, fabric and I have a video on how to print on fabric. And so you could even do something like that and, you know, stitch around that or layer it up and stitch around that. And one of those types of things could be your, you know, could be on your cover as well. So there are a whole variety of ways that you could put something on the cover. Um, I may or may not for these. I'm not entirely sure. I have not decided. I have a couple of pieces pulled out that I might put on some of them. I'm not sure. But um, this is where we're at, guys. So I hope this made sense. Any questions that you have, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below and I will address them as best I can. And uh, then when I see you next, we are going to be creating, like I said, the journal piece, um, a cover for the journal, and then we'll create a way to tie it into the cover. And yeah. Then we'll be done with our little chunky needle books. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up my other, you know, ones that I've got in various stages over here. <laughs> I'm going to finish these up and attach them into my covers. And when I come back, we'll be creating the, um, we'll be creating the journals for these. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you found something um, inspirational and uh, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you're having a good time crafting along um, until I see you guys next time have a wonderful morning or afternoon or evening or middle of the night whatever time it is on whatever side of this globe of ours that you live on and um, I hope your weather's lovely and I hope you get to get outside or I hope you get to do something creative and be with the ones that you love and until I see you guys next time take care stay safe and God bless you Bye, guys.